like a lot of people of his generation, my grandfather was the kind of person who could make or fix anything. He'd, uh, he'd come up with an idea, he'd go uh, down into his little basement shop, and he'd come back sometime later, and it was like magic. There would be the thing that he had built. And I've always been in awe of that ability to just make stuff. It's like magic. But I'm kind of more of the software generation, and uh, you know, my, my whole career has been in software, and you know, uh, my kids are obsessed with the iPad, and, and the whole idea of, of making things in the software world is that it's really easy. You know, you've got, you can do almost anything. It's, the only constraint is the fact that you have to make it in this little tiny two-dimensional screen. Um, my, my most recent startup was a company called Urban Spoon, and a friend of mine and I went down into the, the basement, and we uh, sat down together and hacked out uh, a website in about a month, and then later we wanted to make an iPhone app, and we did that again, we started in May, and we shipped it in June, and so there's something about the software world that just makes it so easy, so it's very appealing. But I really miss making three-dimensional stuff, and uh, unfortunately it's a total disaster whenever I make three-dimensional stuff. Software uh, so I, I'm, I, I, uh, have found that very frustrating because I'm also kind of a perfectionist, so I get an image in my head, this is what I want to make. And, uh, and then I go to do it and it looks like a lump of garbage. So technology is coming up with answers to this, which is really exciting for me. And, and uh, there, there are things like 3D printers you've probably heard of. Uh, this is a laser cutter, so I got a laser cutter. And the idea for me was maybe if I use a machine, I can like design it all on a computer and then hit print. And <laughs> I'll do this, I can something physical that I can, you know, that I can hold. So, this is a box. My grandfather loved making boxes, and uh, this is a box he made from an old cherry tree in his backyard that he gave to me when I was in high school. And I love boxes because they look so simple. I mean, they just look like this is a box. But I've tried making boxes before, and it's really hard, like getting it, getting it to work. At least for me, uh, <laughs> doesn't doesn't usually work. So the laser cutter came to the rescue. Uh, this is a, a jewelry box that I made uh, for my wife, and um, the way that it fits together, these are all these these flat two-dimensional shapes. Um, and there are there are notches and, and holes that are cut, and it, it's all cut to the like a thousandth of an inch accurate. So when you slip these pieces together, they lock together with no glue. There's no no, no screws. They just they just fit together. And I, I found it's really interesting using this tool. How much the tool is kind of helping define what I want to design. So it's not just kind of how you make it, but it also influences what you choose to make. And in this case, you know, again, it's really good at cutting slots. So I do a lot of things that have these sort of simple silhouettes. But then you can make really beautiful three-dimensional stuff out of it. My grandfather was also kind of an electronics whiz, so he could, anything that had vacuum tubes, the guy could just <laughs> rip it apart. He understood how televisions and radios and all that stuff, he understood how that stuff worked from the ground up. And, and even though, you know, again, my whole life I've been playing with computers, my sort of understanding of how it works and how a computer actually works, the internet, is pretty poor. So I, I got this idea of trying to make uh, something in electronics, and I had this kind of random thought of a, of a toy. It's a crank power, no battery, uh, bamboo cased electric piano. And uh, <laughs> I don't know why. Anyway, and so I, I, I built this thing. And, and it was really, it was fun because I got to touch on so many different things. So I, I had to make the case. The case was made with the laser cut, of course. It's actually kind of a sandwich of like eight or nine cross sections of the piano. Um, the, the crank is taken from an old uh, uh, flashlight, a crank powered emergency flashlight. And, uh, and then the electronics were built in something called uh, Arduino, which is this kind of prototyping tool for, for learning about electronics. So I learned a lot. Ironically, one of the things I learned was, uh, was that the hard part wasn't the electronics and the stuff that I kind of originally set out to do. It was all the physical inner workings, getting wiring and soldering and getting the keys to work when you push them. Uh, so the challenges were different than I expected. Um, this is a toy my grandpa made right around the time I was born. It's a, it's a little like ping pong paddle thing, and it's got little five chicken figurines around the top of it, and they're all attached by threads to a little lead weight, and you swing the thing around like this, and it tugs on each of the chickens, and they go peck, 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 it's, it's an old Russian toy. So I had this idea of doing the kind of, wow, that is really bright, of doing the modern reinterpretation of that out of, out of plastic. And so this is made of laser cut plastic with the battery and a little motor, and you flip the switch, and again, the, uh, <laughs> The little chickens uh, are pushed by the motor and go peck, 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 but now without any of the elegance of wood. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it was really fun, and, and again, I, I, it was fun making it on the laser cutter, and partly it was fun because it completely dispelled the myth that the tool is ready to just push a button, print, and out comes this complex product on the other side. I think there's still a long way to go before you can do that.
that, and, and so I'm having to learn craftsmanship despite myself. Um, these are the chairs that my father used when he was a kid, and that then my brother and I used when we were little, and now my kids are using them, and I, I just love the fact that this simple thing has been around for almost 70 years now, and kind of continuous use, generation after generation, and, um, and, and it's still beautiful. And I think that furniture is basically the opposite of the spectrum from software, because it's, it's big, it's tactile, it's static, it's not, it, it, and it's more sort of permanent in a way that software definitely isn't. So I, I decided to make a, uh, a, a kid's chair. And uh, the challenge, of course, is that I've got this little laser cutter. I, I couldn't make anything. I didn't, couldn't make me-sized furniture, so I had to make several kids. But like, like the box, the pieces are, there's seven pieces, they're cut out, and uh, you slot them together and lock them in place. And uh, these, these little flat planes turn into this three-dimensional object, and, um, and it, it, was, it was kind of fun to be able to make a kit for building furniture. Um, and now I'm kind of trying to turn this into a little business, like uh, you're making a range of colors, and you can swap the colors to sort of customize your chair. The kid can be involved in that. There's this theory I have that kids would like engage in making their chair, and they might get very excited about um, you know, sort of the process of creation and the process of craftsmanship in the process of making these chairs. So. I, I think my, my grandfather wouldn't be at all thrilled by the idea of mass production, <laughs> but uh, he's a different style. But I think he would love the laser cutter, and I think it's all about tools for basically turning your imagination into a reality. And it's so exciting for me to think about what these two guys are going to see when they're my age, the kind of the ability to sort of take things out of your head and make real stuff in the world. So thanks a lot.